In this video, I'd like to show you how I designed and built this compact wireless LED ring light for my SND microscope. This can be powered from the USB or from a small LiPo battery, which can then recharge from the USB port. And this will be a very nice upgrade from what I had before, which was this LED light strip that used to serve as that microscope light. So stay tuned for the details. This is the stereo microscope that I use for SMD work and prototyping. It's an excellent addition to any electronics lab. In fact, I would uh, really say it's a required tool for any serious SMD work. This one served me well over the years since I started Lopar Lab, and it provides an overall 7 to 30x magnification between the body and the 10x eyepieces. And it comes with this optional uh, two times magnification Barlow lens which can mount here and effectively double that uh, overall magnification range. Every such microscope will need some kind of good light source to make it useful. Uh, the OEM light for this type of scope is this bulky power supply along with this weird looking light stick that is mounted here in the back of the unit and provides an incandescent spotlight on the workpiece. So besides that being a bulky combination and uh, the yellow color of the incandescent light, I knew I wouldn't like that unidirectional spotlight. So that was not a good lighting solution for me. For all these years, my hack solution was this makeshift light that I made from a strip of white LEDs taped to the scope and power from 12 volts. This is not pretty at all, but it works very well and provides the necessary light for SMD work. These LED strips come in various colors and you can find whole rolls of these on eBay for under 10 bucks delivered. These are bright white LEDs in a 3528 SMD package and on these strips they come in sets of three uh, along with the 180 or 150 ohm uh, resistor. Uh, this is the schematic here. They're uh, sets of three wired in parallel with each other. Uh, each LED will drop about 3 volts, so these will require 12 volts to power the whole strip. Um, and you can cut these to make shorter strips on these uh, markers here between the sets. I use these uh, strips to add lighting in various places, including my pick and place machine. And I made some other projects from this, like this uh, large LED panel, uh, which I made from a whole roll of these uh, white LED strips. And I have uh, one of these in my 3D printer, and this is really bright. So it's perfect to eliminate uh, enclosures or things like that. As an upgrade, I wanted a nicer, brighter light source for this scope, and ideally a wireless light that could be powered from a rechargeable lithium polymer or lithium ion battery like these, uh, and which is also more convenient to move around than having to deal with a bulky uh, separate power adapter like this one. So I poked around an eagle and I came up with this quick SMD project. Uh, this uses the same LEDs as on those LED strips. And here's the schematic for that. It's just a bunch of LEDs in series with 100 ohm resistors. And that's going to allow these to be powered from a LiPo battery, which connects through a JST connector and through an on-off switch. And this is charged by this charger which takes as input from a micro USB or DC jack. The challenging part was to trace this outline to match the unusual shape on the bottom of the microscope. And this scope also has this offset threaded mount for a two times magnification Barlow lens. So I had to make sure that this cutout is clear from the mount. Uh, I placed as many LEDs as I could around that and then some more at the edges to get as much light as I possibly can. And this is the fabricated PCB. Uh, even though I really hate black colored PCBs, I had to compromise in this case because I wanted it to blend with the black paint of the scope and avoid any PCB color reflections. There's an online service called Osh Stencils which offers laser cut Kapton stencils and even uh, stainless steel stencils. And a small stencil like this one runs around 10 to $15 and it takes a couple days for the shipping. This is a good service if you don't have any other options. Uh, but since I have access to a laser cutter, I fabricate my own prototype SMD stencils from uh, Mylar transparencies. 
Uh, years ago, I used to use a different method, and uh, I used to make stencils from soda cans. And I have a very detailed video on that process. But that method is uh, slower and it's more involved, so uh, these days I just cut stencils from uh, Mylar very quickly on the laser cutter. And I have a couple examples here. I even made a very large stencil for a PCB panel, and this works very well. It's probably good for several applications, probably several dozen applications before it starts to wear out. And uh, I really like this method because it offers me a very quick way to make uh, prototyping stencils without having to wait several days for shipping and uh, it's actually free if you have access to a laser cutter. To make the stencil I'm just going to go on Eagle and deselect all the layers and only select the top cream layer. And that's going to give me all the SMD pads for the components. Once I have that, I will export this to DXF format. And before I send this off to the laser, I'm just going to import this in Coral and make some small adjustments. This SMD USB connector has some extra outlines that I need to remove, so I'll set that to none. And this now looks good. I will re-export that as DXF. But this time it's going to be with inches uh, because that's what my laser cutter expects. All right, I have uh, the template ready here for the laser. I'm just going to download it to the machine. And I'm using these plain paper copier sheets. They're transparent sheets for... Um, overhead projectors. I have one here in the laser. It's all ready to go. So I'm just gonna close the lid. I need to start some blowers here and the chiller. I'm gonna do a quick outline test and then I'm gonna hit start. So this is actually cutting the outlines for each SMD pad, it's not engraving them. I used to engrave them some time ago, but that used to take really long time for a large SMD stencil or one with lots of components. So I just switched to cutting the outlines and that works really great for most uh, cases. Sometimes you need to engrave uh, SMD pads that are really small but uh, I usually end up just cutting them and that works great. And that's it, it's done. This looks good. I just need to do a little cleanup. And this is the finished stencil. I noticed there was one pad here that was too close to another and it got burned through. And I guess I could uh, play around with the power and speed settings of the laser to avoid that, but this really doesn't matter. Uh, SMD reflow is really forgiving, so this won't cause any problems. So let's try this on the PCB, see how it fits. There, perfect fit. So this is ready for applying some paste. As far as components, I just desoldered LEDs from a bunch of these LED strips that I had laying around. And I had some 100 ohm 0805 resistors, so I just used those for the LEDs. And for the charger and the connectors, I just borrowed those from uh, my other products.
Okay, we're here at the prototyping reflow oven. I use this for prototypes like this. I have my ring light in there ready to go. So I will slide that in and I have a thermocouple on my flip meter, which is gonna help me monitor the temperature. So I'm just gonna push that in there carefully so it doesn't mess up the parts on the PCB. And I'm just gonna turn it on. When the temperature reaches about 135 to 140, I just turn the oven off and temperature is gonna continue to ramp up to about 180, at which point I'm gonna turn it back on. Okay, so we're at 180 degrees. I'm gonna turn this back on and this is going to take that solder paste on the PCB and bring it over that last peak of reflow where we want it to melt and have the parts reflow on the pads. Depending on how much thermal mass there is on the PCB, some PCBs might reflow faster, some might reflow slower, so I'm just going to watch for that uh, shiny solder to come on and then once I'm confident all the pads are reflowed I'm just going to turn it off. I don't really want to let this uh, go past 240 degrees. So once the solder is reflowed I'm just going to open the oven and I'm going to let it slowly cool off. And I can even pull this out to help it cool faster. And here we have the finished PCB. Everything looks good. All the parts are in place, so I'm just going to apply some power from a LiPo battery and I'm going to simulate the on-off switch with a pair of tweezers. And there it is. All the LEDs are lighting up. This looks great. Let me just test charging. And that appears to be working just fine as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, solder the on-off switch and I think I'm going to leave the DC jack off for now. Here's the finished product installed on the scope. Since there were no mounting holes on the body of this, I just used a little hot glue around the parameter of the PCB, and that works well. It's more than enough to keep it very well secured. I'm using a 2 amp hour battery to power the light. This draws about 320 milliamps at 4 volts, so uh, with this battery, the light should last at least 6 hours per charge, which is not too bad at all. Overall, I really like how this turned out. There's plenty of light here, it's very mobile, I don't depend on any wiring or any other adapters or external attachments, which is exactly what I wanted. I can think of some ways to improve this version, like maybe adding a power off timer to turn off the light after some time of use, and maybe move that USB jack to the side for better access when I'm charging it. I also thought of brightness control. But there's never too much light on a microscope, so I don't think it's worth the effort and uh, the extra circuitry. For now, I'll share a link below to the current version of this design, and I hope someone can benefit from it and take a stab at making this light or some kind of variation. Thanks for watching. If you found this content useful, please click that like button, check out my other projects, and subscribe to the channel for more similar content. See you later.